Welcome back to another episode of The Art of Giving a Damn. Our guest today, first of all, has an amazing book that she's going to share with us a little bit about, but she helps entrepreneurs who really want to learn how to speak their client's language so that they can grow their business, make more income, have more impact. Uh, she's the creator of Client Clarity to Cash Flow and the author of the Amazon number one bestseller, She Markets, a guide for women entrepreneurs, five simple steps to attract more clients, make more money, and have more impact. Cynthia, welcome on the show. Oh, thank you, Michelle. I'm excited to be here. I've been looking forward to our conversation. Yeah, you know, you and I have had a few conversations uh, not recorded to share that have been really interesting because this is such a challenging topic, especially for a lot of women entrepreneurs. I know you've reached uh, and helped people who were small companies, single company, single person entrepreneurs, all the way up to big companies for the last 30 years you've been working in this area. Um, yes. You do workshops, you teach people this. This is kind of what you live and breathe is the idea of here's how to attract your ideal client. Clients. Absolutely. Absolutely. I live and breathe it. I do. And, and you know, after I left corporate America, after a very abrupt downsizing along with half the company, so I became an instant overnight entrepreneur <laughs> and totally unprepared, but I was a consultant for a long time. And then mm. I realized that no matter how uh, well we did marketing campaigns and launches, once I left the project, there was no follow through. And then I realized that I really wanted to teach how to hone in on your ideal client. Because what my students and clients tell me is once they go through the process, they can go back to it again and again. Yeah. So I, I put together a system, the five step clarity to cash flow system. And I put it in my book. It's all here. Awesome. She Markets, a guide for women entrepreneurs. And it feels good to, uh, this is kind of my gift, I realize, after a lot of, you know, pivots. <laughs> and so, because it, it's so basic and fundamental, for, especially for entrepreneurs. I, I love the phrase you used a minute ago, you, you became an instant entrepreneur when corporate went a little unexpected there. I think there's a lot of us that in one way or another, for one reason or another, we had that moment of, okay, I'm going to start my own business. I'll figure this out. And it's funny because for a lot of us, that ideal client piece really is a challenge because we, we don't nobody teaches you that you don't learn that in high school or in college unless you go into marketing that's not a conversation that most people are having and I know one way that it relates that we're going to talk about today is the idea of how to shift your marketing mindset and move out of your comfort zone a little bit because for women entrepreneurs it really is out of our comfort zone to get out there and market and promote ourselves it is so many women feel Oh, I feel salesy. I feel hypey. I feel yeah. I don't want to toot my own horn. And so part of the benefit, which was when I first started teaching, I didn't really teach how to get out of your comfort zone mm -hmm. and how to set up your marketing mindset. Right. But what I learned sort of by as I started teaching was that once you focus in on your ideal client and once you describe this perfect person and she can be she or he can be a fictionalized version it's it, it's a story or a description um, it's everything you know about the person who gets the best results from your services and your products and so once I started teaching this I realized that okay when it comes to getting out of your comfort zone I mean Marketing really isn't about tooting your own horn. It isn't about self-promotion. Marketing is about painting a picture for your potential clients mm -hmm. on how to get them from where they're stuck to where they want to be. Yeah. Absolutely. And that really is the key that I think is missing for a lot of people. We get on, out there in our business and we think, I've got to promote myself. I've got to tell people why I'm great at what I do. I got to, and it's all focused on us <laughs> instead of taking that step to identify and focus on our ideal client because when we do that, 
everything else shifts around our marketing. So, you know, mm -hmm. talking about, about marketing and mindset, um, what are some strategies that you use when you're working with entrepreneurs to help them get out of their comfort zone and get out there and share what they do? Where do you start with somebody if they're like, this is my business, this is what I do, but I don't want to market, it feels salesy. Where do you take that conversation? <laughs> I love that question. So what I do is I tell them to take a breath and let's first focus on your ideal client. And when I say ideal client, I mean find a binder, okay. <laughs> pull a picture, just a picture from anywhere okay. that reminds you of your perfect person, give them a name, make this person real for you and keep the binder or folder or a journal, whatever tracks best for you, and gather everything you know. Things that your clients who have gotten wild success by working with you, what have they said? How did they feel? What were they excited about? And, and you, you go very deep because mm -hmm. one or two paragraphs is not a perfect client description. And it, because you want to go deeper. You want to go deeper than anybody else in your space. Because then when you know their priorities, their emotional drivers, because it's, it's not enough to know the problems you solve. Because you solve problems for them. You help them get a beautiful website. You help them get in shape. You help them put uh, together systems for their business, right? These are all problems that we solve. Mm -hmm. But there's, there's a bit, those are benefits that you provide peace of mind, you know, yeah. a smooth running business, fitting into that dress or that suit you've been holding on to for five right. years. <laughs> so, but then there's a benefit after that. What's the benefit that they experience? They have more time with their family. They're, they feel wonderful. They can play with their grandkids. They can take a trip. They have time to spend doing the stuff they love. Yeah. So when you go deep enough to know not just the firsthand problem that you're solving, but what are the impacts on their life and their business that you help them, mm -hmm. that's going to make you feel wonderful, right? Because yeah. you're not just Absolutely. solving problems, you're impacting their lives. So, okay. when you, so if you keep, you, you describe your ideal client, you get him or her firmly in your mind, and when you sit down to create a video or you create a blog or you go to a, a business networking event, you don't start off by saying, hi, I'm Cynthia Trevino, I'm a marketing consultant. Right. Mm -hmm. You start off by saying, hi, I'm Cynthia Trevino, and I work with women entrepreneurs who really want to get a handle on how to tap into who their perfect clients are so they can make more money and have a bigger impact. I love that. You know, it's, it's something that when you're able to identify what's the value you actually deliver beyond just I help you lose weight or I fix your website or whatever those tangible things are, yes. it not only changes the way you feel about what you do in terms of you see your value in a different way, but people start to get excited. You know, when you're able to look at what you do and go, oh, that's how I actually affect my clients. It's a whole different ball game. I, I said on a coaching call, I think it was a couple of days ago, we were having a conversation about having sales conversations, which a lot of us, we don't get that excited about. We kind of dread them, right? <laughs> we're nervous. We're worried. What are they going to think? What am I going to say? What if they ask a question I don't have the answer to? How do I ask for, you know, you know the list. It's endless, right? And It's a long list. <laughs> it is a long list. And we started talking about, you know, how to transition and really support somebody in making the best decision for them and really looking at what are those benefits, what's the ultimate value you bring in, and you can see it when that light kind of clicks for somebody, it comes on and they go, oh, that's all selling is. It's really helping somebody make a good decision for them and solving the problem. And I said, you know, you got to give yourself permission to fall in love with the sales process and with marketing because it's how you help people. It's how you get clients in. And I love that you focus people in on that ideal client vision. Um, what you were describing reminded me of like the way we create vision boards for our goals. And I think a lot of people have skipped that step of creating yes. that vision board, so to speak, of who's their ideal client. So. If people are listening and thinking, well, okay, this sounds really great. I want to feel different about my marketing. 
where do you start to figure out who your ideal client is? Where would you advise somebody, like, what question do you start with other than, okay, I want to work with women that are this age? Where, where do they go with it? Right, because after the demographics, the provable facts, their age, their income, where they live, the next thing you do is you sit down and then you start to go deep as a person. Mm -hmm. And this is where sometimes I recommend journaling. If you love journaling, because okay. you can, you can, Put yourself a uh, pour a glass of wine, a cup of tea, a beer, sit back, and just think about all the people that you've gotten the very best results for, mm -hmm. the people that you love working with, and the mm -hmm. people that roll up their sleeves are motivated to make a change. Yeah. They're going to follow your advice. They're going to use your products and services the way they're meant to be used. Mm -hmm. And so get everything down about them. Ask yourself questions. What are they ready for? What are they tired of? Ooh, what, frust question. what frustrates them? Mm -hmm. What, w once again, going back to those, uh, after they solve this problem, what do they want to do in their life? What, it, what is it? Are they going to start a charity? Are they going to expand their business overseas? Are they mm -hmm. going to take their entire, all their grandkids on a, on a trip to Europe? What, whatever their dream is, goal for what they do every day, and and so you you just ask yourself questions and you start replaying mm -hmm. how they felt and what they said to you and and that's why i like the idea of a journal right because you can come back to it it's not a one or two hour exercise okay all right so how do you how do you handle the objection that comes up in evidence when you start this exercise with people who are like, but I want to work with everybody. I don't want to focus in. Nobody's going to, what if I can't find the specific person? Where do you take that part of things with people to help them understand that, you know, the, the process, you, you want to go through the process because you really aren't the answer for everybody on the planet. Exactly. And, and I know it's the famous, you know, oh, but I you know I can help everybody. That's true. But until you scale your company, until you have a large team, if you're a solo entrepreneur, if you're just getting started, if you've got a tiny team or a couple of virtual assistants, mm -hmm. you do want to focus because you don't have the resources or time to spread yourself that thin. So that's why you focus in on the ideal client mm -hmm. and you channel what you get into their mindset what are they thinking about when they're trying to solve the kinds of problems you help them solve and keep in, there's a couple of things to keep in mind number one you're the boss so okay. if you somebody comes into you and they don't meet your ideal client you make a choice if they're you want to work with them it's a fit you it, that's fine but focus mm -hmm. your energy because there's so much noise a social media tsunami as we know, is out there every day. <laughs> yeah, that's a great way to describe it. <laughs> so to, to cut through, that's why you spend time going deep to get to know your person, because you, you will um, tap into what's on his or her mind, and then mm -hmm. it'll be more easy to use the words that she or he would use, because you don't want to say, um, I do marketing campaigns and product launches and, you know, social media and editorial calendars because yawn, right? Unless you're right. a marketing geek like me. <laughs> <laughs> you <can> yes. Go. <laughs> that, that's about really knowing your ideal client and the language they speak. If, if, if there is a certain segment of the market who would hear those words and they'd light up, but most people would not. <laughs> most people would. So, so I have a short story to okay. tell you to remove the fears, okay? So um, J.K. Rowling, as we all know, the writer and inventor, creator yeah. of She Imagined Harry Potter, right? And right. built, and so giant empire, people in every country, in every language, in every generation love Harry Potter, right? Yeah. When J.K. Rowling began the first story about Harry Potter, Mm -hmm. She had her ideal reader in mind, her ideal customer, ideal client, if you will. Okay. And do you know who that was? I'm curious. It was a 13-year-old boy. So J.K. Rowling created this wonderful universe and story, but she always wrote for a 13-year-old boy. And yet, <sighs> the story resonated across everywhere to millions of people, right? So... So don't be afraid to hone in on one person 
because your passion will come through. Your caring, how, how you love impacting the people you work with, that will all come through. And even the non 13 year old boys, if you will, will <laughs> resonate. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, that, that really is a great point and a great story because just because you narrow down and identify who is that you want to work with doesn't mean other people won't find you and ask yes. about working with you. And it doesn't mean you can't decide to work with others. Exactly, exactly. And so that's what you, you, you'll get so tuned into your person and, and, it brings out the best in you. And so one other tip I have when you're to get out of your comfort zone mm -hmm. is to, um, and I do in my book, She Markets, A Guide for Women Entrepreneurs, I'm practicing. Um, <laughs> I do, I, I have all of these questions and all everything mm -hmm. uh, outlined here. But another great exercise is to remind yourself of your value. So you list another journal exercise because once again, I think when we write, don't you, Michelle? When we write, we come up with, with sometimes yeah. deeper thoughts than we do when we're typing. It connects in a different way. Yes, yeah. So journal about your passions, mm -hmm. what, you're really, what you really love. Uh, number two, your skills. Your skills are things that you taught yourself mm -hmm. and, and also your natural skills, your skills, your passions, your experiences all the things you've done that led you up to where you are today. Because as an entrepreneur, you're going to call on, because just like these questions, you never know when a client's going to ask you a question, and you're going to call on something you've done in the past right. that really isn't as, as directly related to your, to your field, right? To your mm -hmm. industry expertise, right? Yeah. So, so journal all of those things that you're really good at mm -hmm. and remind yourself of everything you bring. Because as an entrepreneur, you're bringing your whole self to your business and to right. your customers and clients. Right. I love that. That's a great exercise to really get some more perspective around why you're unique as well as what your value is. Exactly. Exactly. So exactly. And, and then you keep all of that in mind mm -hmm. and it helps you craft your stories and your messages because you combine that with what you know about your ideal client, what you teach right. yourself, what you already know and you're just getting it out where you can use it. Love that. Okay, so a couple of things. First, for those of you who've seen the book, if you're watching on video a few times, <laughs> uh, or if you're listening on audio, you've heard us mention it, there'll be a link right near the video or the audio that you're listening to where you can check out Cynthia's book. Uh, it's called She Markets. You can also just go to Amazon and search She Markets. It'll come up there. It's a fantastic guide to help you really figure out what are those steps. So if you haven't defined your ideal client or you're hearing this and you're realizing, okay, you can go a little bit deeper with the definition, really figure out who is yeah. it that you're looking for because once you know, your clients are easy to find. That's why it connects to cash flow like Cynthia's title mentions uh, because once you know who you're looking for, then you can start to find <laughs> <laughs> so you can click a link near this video or the audio to find that. Um, Cynthia, before we wrap up, one question for you that I ask everybody on the podcast. What yes. is your absolute favorite part of what you do in business? My favorite part of what I do in business is working one-on-one -on -one with my clients because it, 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 it's that connection. And when somebody says, oh, now I get it, and it makes you feel like it's all worthwhile. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, that's a, that's a great moment when you kind of see that light bulb come on for somebody yes. and they yes. get the piece, the piece they were missing. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. All right. So for everybody listening, you can find out more about Cynthia and connect with her at shemarketsmentor.com. Shemarketsmentor.com. If you're on the art of giving a DM.com, you'll also find all of her links or social media right below the video or audio here so that you can get in touch with her. Cynthia, thank you so much for coming on the podcast today and sharing with us you know what you do with clients and what you've learned over the years about how you can shift that mindset around marketing and really enjoy sharing what you do with people oh thank you michelle this was a blast i loved it thank you thank you all right be sure that you click like rate review subscribe depending on where you're tuning in and catch the next episode of the podcast i will see you there